welcome to the weekly album anniversary recap show. On this show, we will look at the albums that we celebrated or I posted about from January 22nd through January 28th. I am your host, Caleb, or Caleb the Spy, on Twitter and Instagram. And every day on those social media sites, I do post about what I call an album anniversary, just celebrating the release date of a given album. And, uh, you know, this is something I started a couple years ago with some of my favorite albums. I would track them, and it was just a chance to celebrate, you know, the, the release of our newest album ever by Five Iron Frenzy, or an album by The Clash, or some of those big albums that are really important to me. And then in the last couple of years, uh, or in the last year, really, my my the number of albums that I'm tracking just ballooned. I got a bunch of suggestions from people, and I went back and cataloged every album I own. It's just a chance to celebrate that album. And again, every day I post those on social media sites and just love talking to people about music. I started this podcast as a chance to just sit down and talk about some of those favorites. The reality is there's so many posts. I think I'm up over I'm easily up over a thousand and there's so many that I need to get ready and so many I want to post about that I don't always have a chance to go in depth. Maybe at some point I'll do less albums and go in more in, more in depth on some of them on social media, but right now it's working just to post them. I throw them out there, people comment, and then I use this podcast as a chance to kind of talk about them. So, uh, you know, occasionally on this uh, on this podcast we'll talk about news or other things going on, but mostly we're here to talk about the album anniversaries. I also do occasionally like to just mention, you know, what I'm listening to. And right now I've been listening to just a lot of Jeff Rosenstock. I don't know what it was. I just decided to, I don't know. I've been putting on a lot of his music recently because I do love Jeff Rosenstock. Uh, Again, uh, for those of you who are CCM Twitter folks and a little not not excited about the swearing, uh, probably avoid him. But I think he's absolutely fantastic. So let's jump into the album anniversaries and we got kind of some weird ones. This was a bit of a weird week. I'm not going to lie. I was busy. I honestly did not get to as much music as I wanted to. And so it's kind of a weird week. So let's let's see how long this takes us. Let's see where this goes. But the first album I wanted to talk about is a bit of an unknown one. So this is, uh, you know, one of my monikers that I go by on on Twitter and on, on Instagram is the idea of I'm the uh, caretaker of Christian Ska and I, uh, it's a self-proclaimed name. Nobody gave it to me. I I gave it to myself, uh, but I, I do love ska music. It's probably my favorite genre, ska and punk stuff. And I, I love Christian ska music. And so I've got a pretty good collection of a pretty wide variety of these Christian ska bands and, you know, even some of the lesser known ones. And this is one, it's the album pseudo by the band Wookie. And it came out in 1999. And so it was celebrating a 25 year anniversary. I do not know the release date for this album, but sometime in 1999. Usually in these reviews, I try and do just a bit of history about the album. You know, nothing crazy. I'm not a historian. Uh, and so I just, you know, like to look up a couple things. Here's what I found out about this album. Yeah, that's right. I don't know anything about this group. I don't know anything about this album. I can't even remember how this got suggested to me, but I have it. I own it. And this is the only album they put out. I think they were from somewhere, uh, like in Oklahoma or something. I, I have no idea. I think I found one website that had information on them, but I didn't have a chance to do any deeper digging. So all I can really say is that this is their only album, and yeah, I I like this. It's not amazing, and by the second half of it, it's not as good, but I enjoy this. Now, again, I'm kind of in the bag on some of these Ska albums, and especially the Christian Ska. I'm more than willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. The vocals at times are just okay. There's, you know, there's moments where they, they need to be stronger, and they're just not. Uh, And some of them, in fact, fall just a little bit flat when it comes to the vocals. But, you know, there's enough here to make me want to listen that I'll I'll, I'll keep myself interested. And this is going to be pretty straightforward. You can't find this album on streaming. So if you're interested in a rare Christian ska album, go check it out. Fat and Happy, Stereotype, and Circle Banshee are all really good songs. I added them to my kind of ska punk Christian 
favorites playlist, so they'll hopefully come up occasionally. Uh, they're all, you know, good songs. So, you know, there you go. Pseudo, I think that's how you say it. Pseudo by Wookie came out in 1999. All right, next one, let's talk about another ska album, and this is Community Support Group by the Bruce Lee Band, and I believe this came out in 2014. Alright, so celebrating a 10 year anniversary, and what's interesting about this album is that it did come out 9 years after their previous EP, which was the Beautiful World EP, which I love. It is still, to this day, it's 2000, that that, that thing came out in 2005, no Sky Records are coming out in 2005, I love that album, it was in my car forever, I think I've talked about it before, and it just, it was in my car and I would just go back to it over and over again. It's only six songs, but it's great. So nine years in between albums, and this was the introduction of a new lineup. Before the Bruce Lee band had been Mike Park, who is from Skank and Pickle and Asian Man Records, and he had done this with, I think, the RX Bandits and maybe Less Than Jake. I can't remember the exact original formation of this group, but this is him, and Jeff Rosenstock joins him on this, uh, Kevin Higuchi, I hope I said his, his last name right, and then Dan uh, a Pothast. Bo- Pothast, I'm saying that wrong as well. I feel really bad. I love Dan's work. Uh, he's a, He was the lead singer of MU330 towards, uh, not originally, but then he took over as that. Some, some absolute great stuff. He's got some good solo work too. But it, it's kind of these four guys reformed the Bruce Lee Band. And they put out this community support group EP. And I think this was really, I, I I don't know how this came about, but this was, I think, I think Mike Park maybe got asked to do this and he got these guys together and he did this and all of a sudden it clicked that he could do it with this group because then later in 2014, they came out with their uh, a really, really great album, which is escaping me right now. And uh, I think it's um, So Long My Friend or Everything Will Be All Right My Friend. That's what it is. Sorry. I'm just blanking out on it. So again, this this is a new group. They 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 try this community support group EP. This is only 10, 10 minutes. It's like six songs, maybe five songs, four songs. I don't know. It's 10 minutes. It's real quick. I don't even know if it's on streaming. I have it. And yeah, it's it's worth listening to. So some of my quick thoughts, that was a little history about it. Some of my quick thoughts is I would say of the new lineups per work that they put out, this is actually probably the weakest of the of the bunch. They put out a number of things since this 2014 release, but you know it's still really good. I'd say the the last three tracks are especially good. Uh, Diana and uh, Miss Me are really good. They're really really good, and this is a little less punk. It's got a little more groove to it, which is interesting because they really added some strong punk rock personas to the group. But then they put out this uh, this album that's just a little more groove, a little less punk. So. If you're into ska music and you you haven't checked out the Bruce Lee Band, I'm not sure what you're doing. They're so good, and this one is totally worth checking out. I have it on vinyl. I bought it. I bought it as part of something else, and I think you get uh, this on one side, and you get uh, what is it? I think rent rental eviction on the other side. So uh, totally a worthwhile purchase for me. All right, let's move on, and we're gonna talk about. The Teal album by Weezer, which came out in 2019, so celebrating a five-year anniversary, which at least one person on Twitter couldn't believe. This album was, I think this really was their comeback album. I know the White Album uh, was good and and really was a step back in the, the right direction from after a couple albums that I think were were pretty off uh, by, by Weezer. And yeah, this one was good. Africa, that cover definitely was a moment in time. I, I don't know anybody who didn't listen to that song after it came out. And whether you like it or not is irrelevant. It was a 
cultural moment. So, you know, good for this band. It was good for them. I'm, I'm happy that Weezer's still doing their thing, even if people don't like it. I, I don't really care. I don't haven't loved all of their new stuff. In fact, I, I'm not a huge into their newer stuff, but I, I'm just glad they're out there doing their thing. And, you know, my thoughts on this is, you know, I can enjoy this. Yes, I, there's other Weezer things I'd rather listen to. It, it's covers and it's only 36 minutes and some of it works. Some of it's a little weird. That's OK. It's not my favorite Weezer thing by even close, really. There's I can think of at least four Weezer albums I'd rather listen to. But, you know, it, it's it's fine. And yeah, this was a cultural moment. And, you know, Africa was it was it was kind of one of those moments. And yeah, it, it's it's funny to think that it's five years ago. I, I feel like this just happened, but uh, it's been a busy five years, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, so there's the the Teal album by Weezer. Uh, just worth uh, a quick mention. Next, we're going to go way back in time. Well, I, I really messed up my math last week. I'd said Planet Waves was only 40 years old. It was 50 years old. Uh, so my apologies to uh, anybody who listened to that and just was struggling with my stupid math. So let me do the math correctly this time. This is an album from 1984. This one is actually 40 years old. And so we're going to jump in the Wayback Machine. We're going to get in the CCM Wayback Machine. And we're going to talk about Twyla Paris's The Warrior is a Child. Again, came out in 1984. This is the third album by Twyla Paris. And, you know, this is uh, one of the songs on here, We Bow Down, is number 48 on CCM Magazine's, like, greatest CCM songs. So, you know, that's some of the history of it. I honestly don't know a lot about this. Uh, In 1984, I was definitely not into music. I was uh, younger, uh, pretty young. And, you know, by the time I was kind of getting into music in the 90s, this was, you know, had moved on. And so I've never really listened listened to this till this week, to be totally honest. And you know, this, some of my thoughts on this is, yeah, this is the CCM music that's never going to get me. It's, it's not pop music. It's, it's more like this. If it was pop music, I think I'd be more interested in it. This is more like just that adult contemporary stuff. It's not my thing. I think this is where you can get some CC album, CCM albums that get this bad rap when it is this just kind of, it feels fairly generic adult contemporary it's it's not going to do anything for me and i think if it was a little more poppy i think i'd be i i think i think i'd be interested in in it a lot more i don't know you know i understand that this was a thing and twyla paris has done a lot of good things for you know the ccm scene but you know it, it's not really for me uh forever eyes i would be honest is a pretty goofy song and then there's also another song called clear vision so I don't know. Uh, were her eyes starting to go bad? It was on her, on her, uh, on her mind. I don't know. Uh, Leaning on the everlasting, of, uh, everlasting arms uh, is that's a good song. Uh, that was really good. I enjoyed listening to that. Uh, you know, but that's not written by her. And then you know, I'll be honest. This was forty minutes, and by the end of it, it started to drag. It started to really feel like forever. I, I totally respect it if you like this and you're into it, and this holds this place in CCM music. But I. I feel like this kind of pop music that's kind of more adult contemporary, this is the stuff that just doesn't last for me. And I, I think it has a moment in time, but I just, it, it's not going to have this lasting effect on somebody like me. Maybe it does on others. That's great. But, uh, you know, that it is what it is. I'm, I'm glad to post about it. And a couple of people were interested in commenting about it. And I'm, I'm glad they like it. It, you know, definitely not for me, but, you know, celebrating a 40 year anniversary. So it, it gets a shout out. That's why I said this kind of a weird week none of the big albums that celebrated big anniversaries are really really special to me so you know we're kind of going through some weird things one speaking of that one last big album or big anniversary that i wanted to talk about and i believe this is 1999 i don't have it written down in my notes but i feel pretty good about that so it's revival in belfast by robin mark Yeah, 
you know, the history of this, I'm, I'm just going to read something. I think it kind of sums it up best. So Mark's album Revival in Belfast was released in 1999 and remained high in both the Christian retail charts and Billboard charts for many years. It was still at number 39 on the Billboard Top Christian chart album chart in 2004, five years after it came out. When the follow-up album Come Heal This Land was released in 2001, it went straight to number one in the Christian retail charts in the United States. Robin became the first artist from the UK to accomplish this feat. I don't know where I got that. That's really bad of me. I got that at some... I was trying to get some history off this. Maybe I just pulled it straight off of Wikipedia, which pulled it off something else. Uh, I'm really good at my job. This isn't my job. And again, if you somebody would like to make this my job, please, please do that. That'd be great. All right, so I'm not a big... You know, the straight worship stuff, I, I mean, it's probably not my thing necessarily, which I know I'm talking about two albums that maybe are not my thing. But this is only 10 songs, and... I, I really enjoyed listening to this. It was, I don't know if it was a feeling of nostalgia. I I really do, though, like, I'm, I'm again, a lot of modern worship does not, you know, really hit me well. And this is good. The, the hits are the highlights. I'm not going to lie. The, the songs that you've sung in church, you know, there there is no other name is really good. Shout to the North is catchy. I will say the lyrics are a little odd. I'm I'm, I'm not sure what we're praising in that song. I know there's moments but the shout to the north and the south nobody wants to hear me say it's a very odd it's a very odd song i get what they're saying but it's just it's a little weird and then you know i, I love the the song you're the lion of judah and the days of elijah is it's a great song absolutely great song so again i'm not a big worship guy and you know you could argue that this is one of those maybe first i don't know 1999 uh i don't know if it actually was one of the first anyway because i know Michael W. Smith's uh, worship album in 2000 is kind of a 2001 is kind of one of those landmark uh, worship albums. This is definitely up there as one of the first, but I really enjoy this one. And maybe it's because I've sung along these a lot of these songs in church. I don't know. I really enjoyed my re-listen of it this week. So that's good. That's what we want. And uh, one one comment that came through on Twitter, and I can't remember who said it, was the ironic thing about oh no, it was on uh, it was on Instagram. And the comment was, you know, the ironic thing about the title here is there wasn't really a revival in Belfast, but that's neither here nor there. So that was some of the albums that were celebrating those big anniversaries. And, you know, like I said, none of those albums are really, you know, there none of those are going to make my top, you know, 150, probably even 200, maybe even 250 album list. Uh, but, you know, some some good stuff to, to talk about and some interesting kind of stuff all over the place. A little Christian ska, some Bruce Lee band, some Twyla Paris, uh, you know, all over the place on those so there was a bunch of other ones, and I'll be honest, this was kind of a crazy week for me. Uh, this is just even hard to get the podcast out, to be totally honest, uh, fitting in everything going on. But uh, So I didn't listen to as much, probably, of the, the other albums, so there's only a, a handful here that I want to just do my quick flyby on, although I feel like I went kind of fast on my, some of the big ones. I usually try and do three. I don't know why I did so many, but anyway, I'll go a little fast on these, and so these are ones that we're not celebrating big anniversaries, but stuff I listened to this week. Two albums by Bad Religion, uh, The Process of Belief, 2002, and True North in 2013. And these are both really solid, especially True North. It's kind of late in their career and still putting out really good stuff. Again, I'm pretty partial to Bad Religion, but it's a, it's a really good... Both those albums are enjoyable to listen to. Uh, just solid punk albums. All right, Out of Eden, This Is Your Life came out in also in 2002, uh, just like uh, Process of Belief. And... This one's a weird. I, I when this comes to up to a big anniversary, it'd be interesting to do a little more research. I just didn't have the time this week. But this, I listened to this, and I, I don't think I've ever listened to it before. And I, you know, three songs in, I said, "Oh, this is this is just Destiny's Child." Now I don't know who was first. I have the feeling, I have the sneaky suspicion that Out of Eden was actually around first because I think they were out. They were around in the '90s, so uh, I don't. I would not claim they are copying Destiny's Child. That is just what I thought. So I, I'm making that comment. It's a little tongue in cheek. I think they were around first, and you know, it's just kind of that R and B sound. But that's what it's that sort of really felt like to me. Even the album album cover kind of had a I don't know a little bit of that feel. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but you know, it is what it is. Again, this is probably never going to be my thing, but yeah, I'm glad people enjoy it, and you know, I was I was glad to check it out. I like the variety, so it was interesting to to check out. All right, next is, I have a Greatest Hits uh, album by Thelonious Monk. I have no idea where I got it. I have no idea when it came out. I don't even have a release year. I cannot figure out. 
I was trying to, I think I only have a digital copy, so I couldn't even figure out, you know, I think, I think I have, uh, what do I have here? Hold on. Just so we're clear, I didn't make you hold on. I just am going to edit this out. But it, it came out, I have a greatest hits album that some, it came out in 1997. I have no idea where I got this thing. He's a jazz musician. It's really good. It's, go check out Thelonious Monk. Really good stuff. And if you like jazz music, yeah, it's worth adding to your collection. Again, I like the variety. So I enjoyed, I enjoyed this. I had a good time listening to it. David Bowie, Station to Station, 1976. Uh, this is the last album before that Berlin trilogy, which I really, I really like that Berlin trilogy. Maybe I'm just a wannabe hipster, but that's, I think that's kind of, I think that's kind of David Bowie's uh, peak, especially when it comes to just really solid albums. And yeah, this one's kind of forgettable to me, but uh, Station to Station, 1976. Elvis Costello's Trust came out in 1981. That was another album we celebrated this week. And... Yeah, this is album number five for him, and it's another solid release by Elvis Costello, and I listened to this this week, and I loved it. I had a super, super good time listening to it. So again, I'm, I'm counting in the bag on Elvis Costello. I, I love all of his early work. This came out in 1981, which really threw me off, because I was, I, I don't know why I was thinking his first album came out in 1979, but that's not true. I think, I think his first album came out in 1977. So, but this is number five, so a lot of albums in those first couple of years. So yeah, 1981, really good. Totally worth listening to. All right, I'm going to skip the one next next on my list, and I'm going to come back to it. And let's talk about P.O.D.'s Testify, which came out in 2016. And this is my perception. Tell me why I'm wrong. They fell back to Earth. They had this huge hit in satellite in 2001. They're on TRL. They're everywhere. The album after that just didn't do as much, and this album didn't sell very well, but... I think I remember a lot of people feeling like, oh, they, they're trying to be Christian again. And yeah, I don't know. It's an album that I remember that being the flag or the the, the kind of the what people were talking about it when it first came out. Um, but yeah, it, this album doesn't do a ton for me. And Goodbye For Now is really catchy. I think that's the one with Katy Perry. Uh, if I'm wrong, I, was, I apologize. Lots of people were... Uh, mention Roots and Stereo, which I believe is the first song off that album. So uh, 2006, Testify by P.O.D. Let's talk about Blood and Water. This is the self-titled album by the group and came out in sometime in 2008. They are uh, they're kind of a ska band, not really. They're, they're a pop punk band that occasionally has some upbeats. There is no horns on this album. And it, the overall, it's pretty good. I like their other one. I think it's called In Character. I like that one better. Uh, this one's okay. There's some, there's, there's some, some catchy stuff on here. They, they have some really catchy songs on in character. There's some catchy stuff on here. There's also a really, the government stole my iPod is a song off this album and it is silly. It's not, not really in a good way either. Not, not great. Let's talk about Petra. Everybody loves Petra. I don't know if everybody loves Petra. Petra, it does hold a special place in my heart. Mostly for nostalgia, but This Means War came out sometime in 1987. I just have it on my calendar for early January. Well, it's not early January anymore, is it? Uh, I have it in, on my calendar in January because, you know, for those a lot of those albums I can't figure out a release date for, I throw them there. And yeah, this is good. He came, he saw, he conquered, You Are My Rock, All the King's Horses, all, you know, really good songs. Uh, I can totally enjoy this. Yes, it's, for me, it's going to be a lot of nostalgia, but, you know... This is uh, this is more than I can say for a lot of uh, I'll be honest a lot of 80s rock that isn't kind of the alternative stuff I find pretty crappy to be totally honest 80s hair metal and 80s rock does nothing for me and yeah I I, I like this enough that I enjoyed my listen to it so that's a pretty big compliment coming from me because again most of that 80s rock stuff I uh, you can you can have it in my opinion uh, two more to talk about and these were probably the highlights of the week. Uh, LS under LS underground lifesavers underground, uh, Sh uh shaded pain came out in 1987. Again, I, I don't think I could find a release date for this one. So just threw it on my calendar and I'm, I was late to Michael Knott, and I tried to kind of go back and, uh, try and di digest his discography. And it's so hard. And I think this is the place to start. If you're going to check out one Michael Knott album, and I know this is not Michael Knott's solo work. This is him with the band that I think this is the place to do it. It's it's, I really, really enjoy this album. I really wish I had listened to this when I got into music in the early 90s. It's really good. Uh, Jordan River and Bye Bye Color are really catchy, 
but yet still kind of dark. Lonely Boy is good. Out time, uh, out time has come. I don't know if I got that right in my notes. Sorry. And it's this kind of. I think it's post. I think it's post punk. That's how I describe it. Whatever. It kind of sounds a little bit like The Cure. A little bit. A little bit like Joy Division. And it, it's so good. The, the, this was a great album. I totally love listening to this. Again, I would say, if you've heard about Michael Knott and you're interested in getting in, I think this is the place to start. I could be wrong, but for me, this is this is the place to start. Let's talk about one last one. I can't believe I went this long because I kind of was all over the place this week. But we're going to talk about the Dingies, uh, the Crucial Conspiracy, which came out in 2001. A trouble come like worms last night. Come back to fight to life. A trouble come like worms last night. Come back to fight to life. This album is amazing. I I I totally miss the Dingies. I I didn't get it. I I had a couple of their albums back in the late 90s, early 2000s, but I kind of missed it. I didn't get the that they're doing all these different things. They're a little punk, they're a little experimental reggae, they're a little dub, they're a little ska, they're kind of all mixed together, and I missed it. I just didn't get it. I it, I, it was it's it's me and they have won me over so much in the last last couple of years, but really in the last year, this album has skyrocketed from being an album that I, I had listened to and I thought was good to, oh man, this is really good. This, and all of a sudden at this point, this is, this is potentially in my top 20 albums of all time. I have fallen in love with this album. This album has been, you know, I talked about before about the beautiful world EP by the Bruce Lee band being kind of in my car for years. This year I've barely taken this uh, album out of my CD player in my car. I've just kept on going back to it. I get done with it and I restart it again. And I know this is not a big anniversary. It's not celebrating a big year. It's, uh, but I, I don't care. I wanted to talk about this one. This, I, I absolutely love this album. I love how the, the first half of it is kind of, it, it's a little more upbeat. It's, uh, you know, a little more punky and it's, you know, it slows down occasionally here and there, but then the second half really does slow, slow down. There's kind of some experimental reggae stuff and, the World's Last Night is become one of my favorite songs. It's so good. The 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 music is beautiful. It's haunting. It's it's a little weird. It's a little experimental, but it's still just this good reggae vibe that doesn't feel stupid. Uh, you know, some some white boy reggae sounds pretty bad, but this is just this is so good. And the the lyrics are interesting. They they're unique. Uh, he's talking, you know, the world's last night, obviously it's kind of an end time song, uh, I, not end times, but you know, it's, it's talking about this idea that we, we don't, we don't want destruction. We want the new beginning. That is a really intriguing idea. I, I love the words of the song. It's really thought provoking and great stuff. Yeah. So the dingies, the crucial conspiracy, my favorite album from the week, obviously, as it was, uh, it's again, become a really, really big album for me. And I was excited to listen to it again. It was just, it was still in my car. So I just kept on listening to it. I think I had taken it out for something else, but I put it back in and listened to it for like three days straight, uh, just as I was driving kids around, uh, to events. So yeah, uh, great stuff, great stuff, great stuff by the dingies. So that's it for the week of January 22nd through January 28th. I still have to write the thing that I put in Spotify that goes to all the places to describe what this week is going to be about. I have not even done that because I've been running behind. I skipped a lot of music this week because I just, it's been kind of, kind of a crazy week and it's just going to get busier. The, the album anniversaries, now that we're through January, they start ramping up in February. I honestly don't know how I'm going to keep up. I think I'm going to have to start cutting back and just picking you know, either big ones or ones I'm really excited about or just kind of grouping some, you know, maybe maybe I'll have to do like a post that just kind of has them listed out for the day. I, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up, which is a bummer, but uh, it's just the way it goes. Uh, me, and, me and a buddy are trying to get another podcast going and we've been recording a lot and then I've been editing a lot. I do most of the editing. I do all the editing on, on that show and uh, it's been taking quite a bit of my time. And, you know, I have I have four kids and a wife and 
you know, work and those sorts of things too. So only so much time in the day. I might have to cut back on some of the the posts I've gotten. So they're there. A lot of them are just kind of the basics. It's this is the album. It came out this year and, you know, I, I'm still getting some engagement on them, but it might be time to kind of switch things up a little or just say more about specific ones or slow, slow down. Uh, I, I really love doing it. It's, it's always fun to me, even setting them up. I, I kind of get excited. Like I was looking at the ones for this week. Let me go through the ones for this week. I'm kind of rambling on about my own personal life, which uh, is not that interesting to be totally honest. But uh, next week, I'm going to have posts from the specials. Uh, This Will Destroy You, Vampire Weekend, Local Natives, Leagues, another one by Weezer, The Prayer Chain, Send Out Scuds. That's another kind of Christian uh, Christian ska band that less people know of. Husker Du, which I said again... Uh, I don't know why, because there wasn't a Husker Du album this week that I know of. So Husker Du and The Replacements, both the next week. A heavy metal band called Vengeance Rising. Michael W. Smith, The Civil War, Squad 5-0, Bob Dylan, The Menzingers. My favorite Menzingers album is next week. Less Than Jake, Fleetwood Mac, Queen, Phil Keggy, The Offspring, Hippocampus. And then one's album celebrating large anniversaries. And again, uh, the first one here. I don't think this is, I know this is not the actual release date and I don't know where I got this one, but the Bill, Bill Gainther trio, I've, I've never heard of that till it got on my calendar. So I'll check that out. Uh, that's, that was like 1974. So that's celebrating a, a pretty big anniversary, 50 years. Uh, other ones by the Broken Bells, Jeremy Messersmith, a, a Minnesota guy, uh, Big Dog Small Fence, another kind of obscure Christian ska band that I once got on stage and sang with. Incubus and the big one next week, the one I'm really excited about, the one that if you're interested in getting on the show and talking with me about, I'd be totally interested in some sort of guest host, uh, Green Day's Dookie will will come out uh, February 1st and celebrates, what, 30 years? 30? 20? 30? 1994? Boop, 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 math, uh, 30, 30 years. i uh, really excited to talk about that one it's, it's, it is what it is, right? Uh, it, it, it's, for me, it's important because it's the first CD I ever bought. So Green Day's Dookie will celebrate a 30 year anniversary on February 1st. All right. Thanks so much for joining me. That is it. I still can't believe I went as long as I did, but, but you know, it is what it is. I'm kind of talking about other things on the show as well sometimes. And yeah, uh, maybe I'm rambling too much. So, hey, the music that you hear at the beginning and the end of the show is the instrumental version of Sing It Out at Street Level by Peg and the Rejected, and which is, you know, the Dingies, who I talked about before, and it's just them doing ska songs. Uh, They have different bands for kind of different styles of music and different things that they're doing. So Peg and the Rejected, uh, Sing It Out at Street Level, good stuff, free on Bandcamp, go check it out. Um, thanks for joining me this week. Let me know what you think. What did I get right? What did I get wrong? I don't think I had any controversial th- takes this week. No Switchwood bashing. Not that I bash them, uh, but in my explanation of why I, I don't love their new stuff as much. Uh, but what were your favorites from the weeks? <laughs> the week? Obviously, uh, you can tell what my favorite was as I went on and on about it. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Caleb the Spy with no spaces. I'm also on Instagram at Caleb the Spy with underscores in between the words. And you can always email me at podcast at gmail.com. No spaces or underscores in that one. But you can put as many periods in as you want in that because uh, that's how Gmail works. If you don't know that little trick, uh, you can ask me about it sometimes. It's one of my funny, uh, it's one of my funner uh, little Gmail hacks. So if there are albums that should be on my calendar, please let me know. I know somebody has sent me a couple and I totally missed them. I'm so sorry. But if there's an album that needs to be celebrated, let me know. I'll try and get it on the calendar. Uh, I'm feeling really stretched right now. Um, what's the the Bilbo Baggins thing? I feel like a not enough butter over too much toast. That's that describes me. Uh, butter and toast. So uh, yeah, if you're so inclined, please leave a rating or review of the podcast. Not this one because you know th- this this wasn't good. Uh, sub- subscribe and and share the podcast. And you know those are the kind of effective ways to get the word out about podcasts. Uh, most of all, thank you so much for you engage with me at all on social media. I know I say this every week, but I do, like I said, I put a lot of time into setting up those daily posts and it's enjoyable for me, but it's really enjoyable to see people get excited to revisit uh, older albums or discover things they, they they had never known before. So I really appreciate when people respond. Thanks again for listening. If you listen to any or all of this show and I hope to talk to you next week. 